Hello, this is the Stories Beside channel. I release videos every day for you. Subscribe and click the bell. They say you can't drink water on your face, but for Christina Finch, it was a weak consolation. The girl did not shine with beauty and hated mirrors with all her soul. Hair of some unintelligible mouse color was not distinguished by emptiness. Small gray eyes, thin lips, wide potato-shaped nose. The sight of it all from the branch made me want to cry. She would not finch, and the potatoes would not laugh Betty. The first beauty of the class knows with a good potato. But the boys giggled nastily, and Christina almost cried. But was it her fault she wasn't born as pretty as Betty? On the eve of prom night, the girls were just discussing outfits for their first adult prom, and Christina sighed quietly on the sidelines, who cares what I wear? Doomedly thought she still will not become more beautiful. Potatoes, she asked Betty snidely, and Christina sighed. But here we go again. What's she going to say this time? Did you remember to buy a mask for graduation? The education department's gonna be there. Why scare them? The classmates burst out laughing, but Christina chose not to say anything. Actually, she was thinking of not going to the prom. To endure the ridicule on such a solemn day, Christina wasn't a masochist. She was looking forward to graduation, never to see her classmates again. Especially that arrogant Betty. More news splashed her mother. How is that interesting? Are you worse than the rest of them? To deprive yourself of such an important holiday. As if you do not understand then. The girl exclaimed bitterly. I'm as ugly as. Christina was silent, unable to come up with a comparison. And just wave my girl, but it's not about looks. Her mother tried to comfort her. But you're a smart girl and a good hostess. And what great essays do you write? It's good for you to say you're beautiful and I'm me. Miranda, Christina's mother was indeed an attractive woman when she was young she had dark hair and dark eyes. And a woman with a sweet figure broke more than one man's heart, but she chose Vavka Finch. He was not handsome, but reverently treated his then future wife and knew how to make money. From him Christina inherited such a prominent nose and everything else except Christina and Finch. Theirs was the youngest son David. Unlike his sister, the boy grew up real handsome like his mother. What a joke nature had made. What a joke, said the villagers. I wish Christina had taken after her mother. She's a girl, and it's enough for a boy to be prettier than a monkey. Christina, though she loved her little brother, sometimes she found herself envying him. What injustice indeed. After all, for a boy, beauty is really an attribute not necessary. The beautiful Miranda fell in love with him, not the handsome one, but kind and caring. But boys like Betty want a pretty girl. From time to time, Miranda urged her daughter to experiment with hairstyles and light makeup. Not for school, of course, but the girl only waved it off. But she didn't believe in a magical transformation, unless she got plastic surgery. It seems to be possible to do it from the age of 16, but with written parental consent. But where's the money coming from? Christina did go to the prom. Her parents bought her a dress from a soft pink background, and the graduation outfit sat on a slim girl's figure, as in a cast, and white shoes, and a miniature handbag in tone perfectly complemented the festive image. What's the use? Tragic voice, said the graduate. You can't hide your face anyway. Miranda nodded. You don't have to, but you can make it more beautiful. Christina sighed heavily. I don't believe it, she muttered. Wanna bet? Smiled Miranda. Christina's godmother, Aunt Wendy, who worked as a hairdresser, gave her a cascade haircut and put into a chic ceremonial hairstyle the girl's hair, decorated with small nooks, and somehow magically turned from machines into ashes and daffodils. Oblique asymmetrical. Slightly bunched teacher distracted attention from the large nose, and light youth makeup refreshed and softened the features of the face. It wasn't me. Christina exclaimed in surprise. The girl looked at herself in the mirror and couldn't believe it was her. No, goddaughter, it's you. Aunt Wendy smiled. It's just like in a Cinderella fairy tale. 
First ball a beautiful dress and a fairy godmother. The only thing missing is the wicked stepmother carriage. Christina laughed merrily and said there's no need for a wicked stepmother. And there is no need for a carriage either. After a little thought, the girl with a sigh added, I'll turn into a pumpkin anyway. Christina, what a pessimism, fairy godmother shook her head. You are entering adulthood, which is exciting in itself, and such a decadent mood. Wendy for the better. You'll go off to study in the city. You'll have new friends and a new life, and everything will be different. And the carriage won't turn into a pumpkin. Wendy knew that her godmother was being made fun of at school and was very worried about it. Therefore, she sincerely wanted Christina to rub the nose of all the offenders. While Wendy was transforming her favorite, Miranda went for a manicure. When she came back to see her daughter, she couldn't believe her eyes. And I always said you should experiment, Miranda said. At the prom, Christina made a splash. I've always known that any girl can be a beauty. Thank you. She smiled shyly, noticing Betty's disgruntled eyes. Of course she did. After all, she wasn't the center of attention. Christina had never liked school nights. All the girls would slow dance with the guys, and she would stand against the wall and pretend she didn't really want to. This night was different. Almost all the guys in the class invited Christina, except for the gym teacher and the computer teacher. Christina, you look beautiful tonight. The latter complimented her. Parents looked at their daughter with pride and smiled and Christina was sure that only good things were ahead of her. Such a beginning of adult life, she liked it very much. Morning, the end of August, a marshraka and a heavy bag in her hands. So begins the school year of a student living in a dormitory. I guess you're going to study. Christina asked, a grandmother of a noble appearance, sitting next to her. Yes, nodded the girl. And what will you be? Philologist. She smiled. What kind of beast is that? Squinted his grandmother, but hesitated. How to explain more lucidly to the elderly passenger? Who is a philologist? It's a person who studies the history of languages. Well, after graduating from uni, I can teach Russian language and literature at school, and I can work in a publishing house. Respectfully stretched grandmother. Well then, study. Just look. No temptation to succumb to any temptations, because there are such sprouts who go to study. And the old woman looked meaningfully at Christina, and she almost giggled. In general, personal life is not an obstacle to study, if of course, do not lose your head. But how can you explain it to the older generation? I'll tell you so edifying, said the old woman, a decent girl will not go by the hand and will definitely wait for her soulmate. Deal. With bitter irony, thought Christina, but I with my looks it is definitely not threatened. In the words of grandmother, something else broadcasts something about the consequences of relationships with guys before marriage. But Christina listened with half an ear. In fact, in the last days before the departure, she thought not only about how she would study. The girl imagined how she would meet a guy and they would start dating. And one day the guy would say he loves her. Dream on and dream on. I injected myself with Christina. Have you seen yourself in the mirror lately? For a guy to want to meet you, you need to pay attention, and they only look at the beautiful ones. Actually, it wasn't that sad. The sensation she made at the prom greatly encouraged her, and Christina finally took charge of her appearance. The morning after the first adult prom, the girl unraveled her hair in front of the mirror and was amazed to realize the cascade. Her haircut, not thick hair, has gained volume. Their color became more interesting, but most importantly, the nose visually reduced. Wow, Christina shared this metamorphosis. Aunt Wendy is a miracle worker. And why didn't I listen to my mom? The dark blue jeans and beige coat were not new, but combined with the new hair and makeup in soft colors, they looked new. And yet Christina didn't feel confident in herself. Oh, and then there's that grandma. Stopping this thought, the girl wanted to say something nice to her. But the grandmother had to go out. But the old woman smiled patronizingly. Good luck with your studies. Girl, 
Thank you, smiled Christina. The next stop was the university. The interage lifted the heavy bag, and it seemed to her that just a little more, and she would break under the weight of the bag. Let me help you, offered a man sitting across the aisle. Together they pulled the sports bag out of the bus, and Christina, thanking her traveling companion, took a breath and moved on. But it was easy for the girl to say it seemed that the bag, which Miranda generously filled with potatoes, salty creations and other snow weighs twice, if not three times more than she herself. Can I help you? Christina heard a woman's voice, and a woman's voice. In front of her stood a tall, thin, smiling girl who looked remarkably like Julia Roberts. She was about the same age as Christina. The girl looked at the bulk, and her gaze expressed sympathy. Well, I don't know, Christina said shyly. If it's no trouble, it's no trouble, assured the student. After that, they picked up the bag and carried it. It was about 30 meters to the dormitory, but to Christina, it seemed like kilometers. On the way, the girl stopped three times and had time to get acquainted. Unexpectedly, and the assistant's name was Kelly. And she, like Christina, entered the faculty of philology. So maybe we'll be placed together, Kelly suggested excitedly. Why am I on my own? Christina thought, oh my God, am I going to have a friend? She didn't have any friends at school. Her classmates did nothing but bully Christina. The only exception was Clara, but she'd been friends with Vanessa and Kanishev since she was a kid. Girls from other classes did not pay any attention to Christina at all, except for her nose. Ugh. Girls exhaled, having reached the watch, you haven't checked in yet, asked the elderly janitor, turning to Christina. No, and the janitor shook her head, went to get the commandant. Christina was put in the same room with a new acquaintance. Don't forget to register in the dormitory, said the commandant, whose name was Olga Vasilyevna, and the girls headed for the elevator. The room in which Christina was to live for five whole years, unless, of course, she was expelled, was on the seventh floor. Kelly had been living in the dormitory for the fourth day, so she felt familiar. However, there was no hint of showing off, so Christina immediately felt sympathy for her roommate and sincerely hoped that they would become friends. Yeah, I remember when I moved in. Kelly giggled. I got off the bus and my suitcase handle broke. It was a good time. Couldn't have broken in the room. Christina laughed merrily. Kelly so interestingly presented the most mundane things, and you could listen to it endlessly. And how did you get out of it? Asked Christina. But the world is not without good people, Kelly hummed. On the way to the dorm got a kind guy who did not leave the lady alone with 15 pounds of stuff. Lucky, nodded Christina. That's true. There are still some gentlemen out there. It's a shame the kid was busy though. We entered the dormitory and at the entrance stands his girlfriend. She's pretty, by the way. She's like the moon to me. And he said, I helped the girl carry her suitcase. And the girl said, oh, you're so good for me. You weren't jealous. No, jealous of me. Kelly laughed. Please, you should see this doll. Dark hair down to her waist, blue, blue eyes. Well, I'm no match for her, but you're not ugly either, Christina said. But you're not ugly either, said Christina. She looks like Julia Roberts. Same duck nose, smirked the future classmate. She sighed. You'd like my nose, what nose? Philosophically remarked Kelly. Any flaw can be minimized or turned into a virtue. And noticing how Christina shook with laughter, perplexed asked, what are you doing? I'm just, she choked with laughter. I just imagined how to turn my nose into a virtue. You this Christina deafeningly laughed. Tears came to her eyes. Kelly, looking at her friend, joined her, and in a few seconds, the girls were laughing like clockwork unless they were Whoopi Goldberg. Through the laughter said Christina, well, what are you for pussyfooting around as a beauty? I, by the way, do not understand why Julia was invited for this role, noted, answered Kelly. There are prettier actresses in Hollywood, and in my opinion, she fit the role perfectly. You're right, 
You're good, she said approvingly. You can laugh at yourself. You know, a little silent, thoughtfully said Christina. And I just now realize how important it is to be able to laugh at yourself. If I had been able to do that when I was in school, I wouldn't have been bullied. Kelly looked at her sympathetically. You were bullied, bullied, and it was because of your looks, Kathy. Well, you'll show them. He who laughs last laughs. Fuck it. Christina, I don't know about you. What are the two days left before the school year starts? I intend to have fun, Kelly announced. So today we're going out on the town. Maybe not today. Christina asked hesitantly. Why wait? As they say, why put off for tomorrow what you can do today? Well, I don't know. But I do know cheerfully, exclaimed Kelly. Today, and not a day later. Christina realized it was useless to argue with her new friend. And then she realized that she didn't really want to. But to change her life for the better even more so. So what was the point? Because, as you know, water doesn't flow under a lying stone. You should wear a little brighter lipstick, said Kelly, critically examining Christina's makeup. Kelly, take pity on me, she begged. You're not gonna believe this, but this is the first time I've ever worn lipstick to prom. Oh, come on. I never would have guessed. Is there such a thing? It does. Christina sighed. And I regret it very much. All the girls at the disco danced medals with boys, and I had best danced with some sister in misfortune. You're a great girl, Kelly said quietly, squeezing her hand. You're going to be fine. Thank you. Christina also quietly replied gratefully, looking at her friend. Hey, gorgeous. Do you need Richard Jer? The girls heard a cheerful male voice. Towards them walked two guys. One of them was a tall, handsome blonde. He was looking at Kelly with interest. The other was shorter, not as handsome, and frowning. He was looking around absent-mindedly and clearly not in the mood for introductions. And who do we have here? Richard Jer, Kelly said cheerfully. Of course, I answered the guy and smiled disarmingly. All I was missing was Julia Roberts, and I think I found her. Yeah, they don't seem to be married. The girl laughed out loud. She clearly liked the guy, and Kelly flirted as hard as she could. The girl was smiling, and there was a playful note in her voice. Christina suddenly felt like a complete fool. Richard Gere's friend showed no interest in her. In fact, he shouldn't have been. If his friend had his eye on Kelly, it did not mean that he himself must necessarily pay attention to Christina. Kelly's new admirer's name was Stephen, and his frowny friend's name was James. Guys, why don't we go to the cafe? Stephen suggested, but I'd love to. Kelly said firmly, really, Christina? Well, I guess so, she mumbled hesitantly. James, are you okay? Stephen asked his friend. I don't mind. James replied with a shrug, and soon they were sitting at the table and chatting merrily, destroying mouth-reading cakes with hot-flavored coffee. How about something stronger, girls? Stephen made a new suggestion. In tandem with James, he was clearly the dominant one. What's that? Kelly giggled. Well, like champagne. The idea was well-received, and ten minutes later the guys were back from serving, with two bottles of beer a drink and a large dish. Start. That's our way Kelly Christina whispered to Kelly, and she nodded languidly. Hey, what are you doing out of sorts? It's okay. Kelly looked at her friend incredulously, but the guys were coming to the table, so she didn't say anything. And then Kelly remembered what Christina had said about being bullied at school, which meant she was unlikely to be invited to parties. Her friend was clearly feeling out of place, and it was no surprise. Kelly really liked Stephen. Yeah, but what about the secular and the bitter? Actually, it would have been great if they were a couple, but James showed no signs of paying attention to Christina, and she, in turn, just didn't know how to behave in company. We'll learn. Kelly smiled to herself and turned to her friend Christina. Will you keep me company in the ladies' room? Christina nodded and the girlfriends retired to the common areas. Christina whispered excitedly, Kelly, come on, 
What are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, rounded on her eyes. Do you like this James guy even a little bit? I don't know, Christina shrugged. Guy's a guy, but he's crazy about you. What makes you say that? She was surprised. I could read it in his eyes. She lied with inspiration. Don't you realize James is just like you? He just needs a nudge. A nudge. What nudge? But you need to let James know you're interested in him. Frankly, Christina wasn't sure she was interested in James at all. But as her father used to say, I can't expect a prince on a white horse with my looks. She thought gloomily and wondered how to do it. Simple, exclaimed Kelly, educated by the fact that the ice has moved. Don't sit there like a mouthful of water. Participate in the conversation. Turn to James more often. Laugh and smile, and everything will be okay. It's just a matter of getting started. But come on, the guys are waiting. At first, Christina was not easy to keep the conversation, but then she was surprised to realize that it was not difficult at all. And two glasses of champagne did their job. Now it seemed to her that James was very well suited to a gloomy expression. It was a trick. As the guys walked them to the shuttle bus, James asked Christina to meet him. But did you? Embarrassed and blushing, he said. You'll give me your phone number. Write it down. The girl smiled. And so it turned out that the world of love became richer for two more couples. Despite the fact that it was not easy to learn, Christina get high. All the same, it was not in vain that I dreamed of graduating soon, thought the girl. Here she made friends, and life in general sung by a character from a famous sitcom turned out to be fun and interesting. Especially if you are still a freshman and all the discoveries ahead. Everything that happened in the dorm brought Christina in indescribable delight. Student parties, secret sleepovers of local students, joint preparation of dishes from everything that found in the refrigerator at the end of the week with the subsequent tasting, and even cues in the shower did not strain. But on the contrary, you nights living in the dorm, Christina mastered the art of quick washing in the shower. And after a month it ceased to seem something terrible to her. What can I say? The first month of dorm life passed under the motto, everything that doesn't kill us makes us stronger. From now on, Christina Finch was a typical homegirl used to going to bed and waking up in silence. No, 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 yes, and had to go to the trouble of listening to music at zero o'clock. And no one cared that she had a colloquium tomorrow. But my mom's pies and cutlets and the amount she wanted were now eaten once every two weeks. That is, when Christina came home for the weekend. And yet for the first time in her life, Christina Finch could say in good conscience that she was perfectly happy. Especially compared to what Christina had put up with. For 11 years of high school life, she also had a boyfriend. Putting her hand on her heart, Christina did not feel for James that not earthly feeling which so beautifully and juicily described in love novels. Rather, she was attracted to a fundamentally new role as someone's girlfriend. And is it love? Pondered Christina. Otherwise, how to explain the fact that Kelly, after a month and a half of relationship with Stephen, found another admirer of Hollywood diva and did not hesitate to move to him? Better no way, snickered her friend. I'm too young to get hung up on one guy, and I wouldn't advise you to. Christina, let's be honest. You're not in love, are you? No, she said yes. Do you want to? Kelly winked. It happens. It happens. Yeah, if it happens, the answer is automatically yes. Here's the thing, Christina. You and I are going out to a nightclub on Saturday. Oh no. Oh yes, I'm going home on Saturday. Christina remembered. Not a problem. Let's go next. Christina only sighed doomfully. It's not like Christina didn't realize that dating a guy on the basis of being cute wasn't a good idea, as well as the fact that it's better a bird in the hand than a crane in the sky. By the way, the second was even truer, at least for Christina. But she had no idea how to tell the guy that it was over between them, just because she wished for African passions and pink clouds. But the Finch branch had no experience with guys, 
James was the kind of guy they say was neither fish nor flesh. He wasn't much of a talker, and he wasn't particularly proactive. And Kelly said he was incapable of action. Did Stephen say something to you? Christina assumed. I can see that. Poked her friend. No, really, Christina. But he's just like that. In a word, he's not. Didn't you want to set me up with him? She reminded me. But I did, Kelly shrugged. It's more fun to be friends together. And then, perhaps, the breakup with her neighbor had spurred her to find a new boyfriend for her friend, too. To make it more fun to be friends. Well, if anyone was interested, it certainly wasn't Christina. The guy was courting her because that's the pattern. They had everything that is usually present in a young person's relationship, a candy bouquet period, trips to the movies where they took seats for kissing. They even had a first night, but it was all kind of stale and soulless, to come up with something original and memorable. No, not James. It's like James was just a stranger to romance. So maybe it was for the best that he wasn't romantic, her godmother said thoughtfully. When Christina came home for the weekend, she stopped by for tea. What is he studying for? A mechanical engineer. The girl smiled. At the Polytechnic Institute. But it's not the most romantic profession, Aunt Wendy remarked. I don't think it's the profession. She didn't agree. She disagreed with her godmother. My friend Kelly was dating a friend of his who goes to school there. So Stephen would surprise her, sent her touching texts. He'd give her a little bouquet just because he was walking past some old lady selling flowers and thought of her. Dating? Yes. They broke up. Christina nodded. Why did they break up if they were doing so well? The godmother hummed incredulously. And Kelly wanted a change. The girl grinned. Yeah. Aunt Wendy grinned back. I guess I'm getting old. I don't get it. It was all good, but it lacked variety. Yes. She told me to follow her lead. By the way, what about you? Oh, I don't know. Christina answered with a sigh. Sometimes I think we're doing well. But it's boring without emotion. James and I have never had a fight. And the girls in the dorm say it's sometimes necessary to, like, shake things up. So maybe that's what it's all about. I don't know, Christina. I mean, you would know. But I think it's a lot simpler than that. You're just freaking out. By the way, how's he doing with his bad habits? Does not smoke with a touch of pride, answered the goddaughter. Drinks a little. And then only on special occasions, I beg you, exclaimed Aunt Wendy. A calm, non-drinking, non-smoking guy from the city is getting a higher education. And you intend to look for a good thing out of a good thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just a generational misunderstanding but I'd advise you to stick with your James. Do you think, Christina, I wouldn't advise badly? My godmother said, I'm not. Besides, I have some experience in life, but what can a friend who hasn't even seen life yet advise? Yes, I guess you're right. Talking to Kathy put things into perspective. Thoughts of finding a replacement for James flickered and flickered in my head, and then they were safely put to rest. And no matter how much Kelly urged her to go to a club and meet an interesting guy, Christina was adamant. All five years of college life, Kelly and the rest of the girls in the dorm were having affairs. Christina was the only one still dating James. Almost everyone said that Christina Finch was wasting her time on relationships that wouldn't make her happy, but she didn't care. Christina didn't remember having a line of guys lining up behind her, so we'll make do with what we've got. Christina introduced James to her parents, sophomore year. But what do you think of him? Heartbroken. She asked her mother. It's your boyfriend and your life, Miranda replied evasively. But we'll see. Maybe the mother, like the girls in the dormitory, had already had a premonition. By the way, James introduced Christina to his parents on the eve of the wedding, which did take place. Christina was finishing university and was preparing for defense and the new groom worked at the factory. Having received a diploma two years earlier than Christina, he changed three jobs. Not a beauty, Vanessa shook her head. 
The mother of James, it was about the future daughter-in-law from whom she was not delighted. The meeting with the groom's parents had finally taken place, and it was not a pleasant one. James left to see Christina off. The dormitory and the mother-in-law was sharing her impressions with her husband. No, not beautiful, the woman repeated. Vanessa, please. Ethan wrinkled his nose. She may not be beautiful, but our son chose her, and we must honor his choice and respect his choice. Vanessa shook her hands. Ethan, what's there to respect? She's just a country girl who can't wait to settle down in the city. Oh, come on. The girl has a college degree and can expect to get a good job in the city. Why not? Besides, Vanessa, are we of the Earl's class? Remember, my dear, where you come from. And I don't understand something. The wife exclaimed with indignation. Are you reproaching me now? No, dear. I'm just reminding you that we are all human beings first of all. And the rest time will show where you saw her nose. What's her nose got to do with it? Ethan laughed. You're inimitable. Just calm down. You don't have to live with her, James. He's a grown man and I think he knows what he's doing. After all, they dated for five years. I think it's Christina. Good girl, the girl. Vanessa muttered with a tightening of her lips. The chorus girl. We know the chorus girl. Vanessa poked Christina's nose wherever she could. Where you can't though. It all started with choosing a place for the wedding banquet. Christina proposed to play a wedding in a country hotel complex, stylized under the old style. This option was suggested by Kelly, who not so long ago was there at the wedding of the sister of another boyfriend. It's really cool out there, she told Christina excitedly. And it's cheap. It's such a big place. Fresh air, nature. Out of town, so out of town, James replied, listening to the bride's proposal. Oh, how Christina wanted to believe that for James her word was law. But deep down she knew that James simply didn't care. But his moment seemed to care, and rightly so. What else would one expect from a country girl? Circus Vanessa. Fresh air. What's missing is a harmonica. Like at a village wedding. What's wrong with celebrating in the fresh air? Ethan said, I'm sure there'll be lots of young people. Besides, it's fashionable to set off fireworks. But you must admit, it's easier to do it outdoors. Maybe without much conviction, replied the wife. In the week before the wedding, the mother-in-law showed her creepy character in all its glory. One day, she and James came to visit, and the future mother-in-law, having sent her son for bread, started talking about the forthcoming marriage. I hope the dress is decent, Vanessa asked arrogantly, referring to Christina's outfit for the wedding. Quite dainty, she replied. It's not like everyone's wearing cheesy mugs, snidely said the groom's mother. That's the way it is in your village, right? God, well, when this matter of her son will stop hurting her small homeland. Yes, Christina was born and raised in the village. But what's so different? Her parents and brother are different from Vanessa, other than their residential address. Oh, those stereotypes that Christina thought were out of date, but apparently not for everyone. And pardon me, she won't let anyone shit on her head. She's not the same schoolgirl who was a victim of bowling for 11 years. And in our village, it is not customary. Christina parried. As long as people love each other. Please tell me, Vanessa said ironically. What about you? Or just to settle down in the city? And at what price? It doesn't matter. But why doesn't it matter? If it didn't matter, I wouldn't have gone to university. My future mother-in-law hated it. It was the country bumpkin who dared to contradict her. She'll answer for it. In the evening, James went to escort the bride to her dormitory, and when they reached it, the groom said, Christina, mom complained about you, she said, and what did I do to displease her? That's all I needed. In two days, Christina has a diploma defense, and the showdown on the eve of the wedding was not in her plans. Mom said you insulted her. James, but she didn't. Christina said, confused. Honestly, I didn't say anything to Vanessa that would offend her. Maybe she misunderstood, but I didn't mean anything bad. But you understand me too. 
your mom, Christina. He interrupted. It would be better if you apologize to your mom. But why fight before the wedding? You have to admit it. He's right. Christina thought about it and said, okay, I'll apologize. Finch, did you catch Shiva? Kelly exclaimed in amazement. For what? I'm embarrassed to ask. Do you owe her an apology? Kelly, but it's not like it's gonna cost me anything. James is right. Why fight before the wedding? James is a mama's boy. Said it like a nail and a friend. And there's more to come. And I told you there were other options to consider. What can I say now, sighed Christina. But by the way, Julia, to whom everyone compares me not only in beauty played, Kelly winked. What's your point? She was in a movie about a wedding. Sang she Christina wrinkled her forehead, remembering movies starring Julia Roberts. Best friend's wedding, she suggested. But what does that have to do with us? It has nothing to do with us. Of course. Kelly grinned. But the movie Runaway Bride is. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, I know you're not going to do that. You can't fantasize anymore. The day after graduation, Christina went to the village. Oh, Christina, I don't know what to say. Miranda said with a sigh. To be honest, I didn't really like your James right away. He's neither. In short, nothing. She smiled, remembering that Kelly had said the same thing about him. But we can't cancel the wedding. Christina said reasonably. The restaurant is booked. The dress is bought. That was true, her mother nodded. But she knew that some of the relatives had spoken up. Let him thank her for marrying her like that. Christina, you're not pretty. It's not nice. And then who says he only marries pretty girls? Take that Betty classmate from the branch. She got pregnant her freshman year. Who knows who the father is? Only her. And that's about it. There's a bad rumor going around about it. Like she doesn't know. Yeah, well, that's Betty's personal business. But the fact that she held Christina up about her looks has paid off in a big way. Betty's only 22. There's nothing left of beauty. She used to be pretty, but she's all gone. Now she was a tulip girl and a single mom. No, Miranda wasn't gloating. Though what's to hide? The thought of her daughter being an Adam had crossed her mind. But now Miranda wasn't so sure anymore. Yes, Christina had become, if not a beauty, quite a spectacular girl. Hair, makeup, good manicure. Against the background of all this splendor, even two big nose looked not so terrible. But she didn't seem to be happy in this marriage. We'll see. Miranda thought philosophically. What's the point in getting yourself worked up? Fintiflushki. Not without gloating, thought Christina. I have to disappoint you. Dear Vanessa, the wedding dress was magnificent, contrary to the expectations of the future mother-in-law. The bride rejected the model immediately. Lush, skirt of white chiffon and silk bodice. Nothing superfluous. The only decorative detail was a big cool rose on the shoulder. The bride's hair was styled in a high updo and only one curl carelessly filed on the shoulder. Good enough to make Vanessa green with anger, so congratulations. In a condescendingly patronizing tone, she said, after the newlyweds agreed to walk through life with their other half, and exchanged rings. Welcome to our family. Emphasis on the word that somewhat shook the newly married daughter-in-law. Wow. And Christina thought she and James were starting their own family. After the solemn registration, the guests settled on cars and drove to the village, which was 20 kilometers from the city. But you are a happy mother. Fun, asked Kelly. Happy, shortly said Christina. The witness on the groom's side was Stephen. The prospect of riding in the same car with her ex-boyfriend didn't bother Kelly at all. In fact, she asked how he was doing. Nothing, Stephen replied. There were a couple of kilometers to the village when suddenly they saw a woman in a bright outfit, which on closer examination turned out to be a gypsy. What do you want to live? I'm fed up with the fool, shouted the driver of the car in which the married couple and witnesses were traveling, and sending a pen nonchalantly said the gypsy woman, I'll tell you what the young couple's family life will be like. 
I will tell you everything. Will you live in wealth or in poverty? I'll tell you about the children. Yes, fuck you. With annoyance interrupted her driver and was about to move off. But Christina suddenly said, and I'm very interested in how much your fortune telling costs and how much is not a pity. The fortune teller cheered up. Christina went to the car and taking out a smart miniature purse, took out of it a bill of five bucks. Will that be enough? She asked to the gypsy. The gypsy hid the money and told the bride to give her her hand. Oh, said the gypsy. I see the success of the money. A house full of money. Christina's mood rose to its highest pitch. Of course, it was only a fortune telling. But on such a day, she wanted to believe only in good things. The groom got out of the car and asked the gypsy, Can you guess something for me too? Why don't you guess, handsome? She smiled gold. A toothy smile. Give me your hand. The fortune teller looked at James' hand. And suddenly her face turned from swarthy to white. A woman's forehead protruded from Paris. Signals began to sound from the cars behind. But are we going or not? Someone shouted in impatience. Christina heard the angry voice of the new mother-in-law. What are you doing here? Mom, it's okay, James reassured her. And the gypsy woman, taking advantage of the hiccup, whispered to the bride run, run away from this man, and you will be happy with him. I see years of torment, but it's not too late to replay it. I don't understand. I started, Christina, but the fortune teller was gone. It even seemed to her that there was no gypsy. They drove the rest of the way in silence. Everyone was in their own thoughts. What did she tell you? Kelly asked when the groom had left. Who? Christina didn't understand at first. What about the gypsy girl? It's nothing special. The bride shrugged her shoulders. She decided not to tell her friend about what the fortune teller had said, as if to say she would start to judge like not your man should have chosen properly. But after all, it's just a fortune teller, just a fortune telling. Christina asked herself mockingly, why did you get so excited? Yeah, Kelly couldn't believe it. You weren't wearing your face then. Oh, Kelly, please. Trying to sound cheerful, said the newlyweds, because of some gypsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we talking about? The groom asked with a smile about love. Kelly replied with a faint chuckle. James was silent. Why talk about it? The witness said approvingly. What is there to talk about? You have to live it. Guys, are you bitter? Bitter and bitter, caught up with the guests. And what about the wedding trip? Perplexed raised her eyebrows Kelly, when on the second day of the wedding, her friend told her that on Tuesday goes to get a job. Sen, well, what wedding trip? Christina grinned wryly. James says that there's no need to spend money on nonsense. Oh, James said. Kelly said meaningfully. Then I have no more questions. What's all the fuss and no fight? Fun, asked Stephen, putting his arm around Kelly's waist. Women's talk, she replied coquettishly, and still asked him. And bring me some champagne. I will. And obeying my lady. He bowed jokingly and went to get champagne. And what was that? Christina inquired. It wasn't. It was love. And who told me to choose well? She picked on her friend. I did. And then I realized that Stephen was the smartest, the most beautiful, but most importantly the most beloved. It's over, smiled Stephen after hearing Kelly's last words. He handed the ladies each a glass and said fondly this deserves to be encouraged with a strong kiss. Christina looked at the lovers and felt sad for some reason. But no, hanging around in rented apartments is not for me. James shook his head. When had Christina suggested renting? Why would she? Mom had offered to live with them. That's true. It's a big place. There's plenty of room for everyone. Having failed to get her husband's support, Mom sighed heavily. She thought sadly, that's what it's all about. However, it was useless to talk to James about it. And after the scene near the dormitory, which took place shortly before the marriage, Christina and would not dare. 
After a year of married life, Christina was forced to state that the diagnosis of mama's boy, set and perceptive Kelly, was correct. Turned out to be correct. As for the little one herself, sitting at the table on her wedding anniversary, she wondered how she had lived under the same roof as Vanessa. She looked at Christina arrogantly, and it didn't escape her parents and brother. What's going on with you two? Having had a moment, asked Miranda, what are you talking about? Made her daughter surprised eyes, listening to Vanessa. So everything she didn't do, Christina was bad. According to her mother-in-law, she couldn't cook, couldn't hold a conversation, looked terrible. She was unrealistic and by all accounts, didn't suit her unattractive son as a woman. And she was a decent cook and she could hold a conversation. After all, she worked with people without being naturally beautiful. Christina carefully looked after herself and paid attention to fashion trends. In short, tried to always look at the level and she succeeded more than once and Christina was not. But here's the latest. What did you hold a candle to? Kelly jumped when she voiced this claim to her mother-in-law. There was actually not much funny, which Vanessa deduced from. It's very simple. In their one year together, the couple has yet to procreate. I don't understand why you're stalling. The mother-in-law was puzzled. When Vanessa first talked about it, Christina said that she and James are not yet ready to become parents. And that was true until Christina had just started living. Five years at the Institute were not easy, and she wanted at least a little bit of a break. That's how Christina perceived her work. Almost immediately after her marriage, she got a job as an editor in a rather successful book publishing house and established herself as a valuable employee. The job meant career advancement, and Christina did not want to miss such an opportunity. And the salary was high. That's a strong argument. What do you mean you're not ready? Splashed hands, mother-in-law. That means the young one thought to herself, your darling, your son, and you are still a child. But out loud, she said the first thing that came to mind. It means that I'd like to work at least one more year. Well, I'll go on maternity leave. Six months later at the publishing house, no one will even remember me. It is not a fact that after maternity leave I will return to my old place of work. However, mother-in-law did not care about her daughter-in-law's career. Vanessa did not consider her position serious. What do you think? Some publishing house disdainfully bailed mother-in-law, talking to her friends. She should have gone to work as a teacher, but who needs her? What can teach a pacifier? For whom the family seems to be an empty sound? Her friends nodded sympathetically. And this inspired a solid woman on a new portion of nasty things to her daughter-in-law about her son's picture. Finger has not struck a finger to prove his readiness to become a father. Vanessa was delicately silent, but self-consciously described what health problems await Christina. Unless, of course, she came to her senses. Yes, none of my classmates has not yet given birth, Christina said. And for nothing, said her mother-in-law admonishingly. Modern ladies, career, career. But why does a woman need a career? After all, her main purpose is motherhood. And let men make careers. Christina only sighed heavily. Her husband was clearly not in the mood for a career. James didn't seem to be in the mood for anything. Otherwise, how to explain his manic passion to change jobs? James never stayed in one place for more than a month. And when asked by his wife, what's wrong this time? He just dismissed it as not what I need. And when Christina tried to find out what he needed, he just shrugged. And she had a sneaking suspicion that James was an ordinary bum. Vanessa said the boy was just looking for himself. Christina repeatedly recalled the gypsy woman who had blocked the path of the wedding cordage. When she told Kelly what the fortune teller had whispered to her, she shook her head. Eh, you didn't tell me about it then. What would it have been? Christina grinned. I wouldn't have had the guts to run away. What would I do? If you needed me, I would have dragged you out of there. What's to say now? She sighed doomedly. You don't have to say anything. Anyway, Christina, I'd advise you to get a divorce. I mean, really, what the hell is marriage? I, of course, do not want to interfere in your family life. 
But in my opinion, you cannot live like this. But don't you want to be truly happy and loved? Yes, I'm sure you would if you wanted to. There'd be a line of people waiting. Maybe, Christina said thoughtfully. But you know, sometimes I feel sorry for James. He's a bit of a loner. Who's going to feel sorry for you? Not Vanessa. So Christina, I've told you my options, and you do as you please. After talking to her friend, Christina decided to put things into perspective. Kelly's right. No matter which way you look at it, she's right. What was keeping her close to James? The answer was obvious. They weren't ready to be parents, but the truth was, it wasn't just that. Christina was convinced that children should only be born in love. But what kind of love are we talking about? She was reminded of that gypsy girl again. Christina had been thinking of her too often lately. What was that about? Who knows? Maybe Christina would have gotten up the nerve to talk about divorce. But nature decided to play a bad joke on her. One day, sitting at work, she felt sick, and on the advice of one of her colleagues made a pregnancy test. Seeing two stripes, Christina almost lost her senses from love. You say babies are being born, she said out loud, not recognizing her own voice, and laughed hysterically. A little calmer Christina began to think feverishly about getting rid of the child. It was out of the question. No, no, and no again. If God gives a baby, it must be born. You've made the right decision. Miranda was serious when Christina told her the news. What if James changed and got more serious about life? Maybe that's why the baby is destined to be born. Mom, I was thinking the same thing. Christina replied and laughed again. This time happily relieved and dreamily added God willing. We have a normal family. Maybe James will agree to rent an apartment too. To be honest, Miranda had little faith in that. But she couldn't tell her pregnant daughter. And what the hell? And if a miracle happened, her Vidic would come to his senses and stop running from one job to another. Putting down the finch phone, the eldest looked at her watch. Her husband and son were about to come home from work, and over a delicious dinner, she would inform them of the impending addition to the family. Awesome! Kelly exclaimed. You're going to be a mom, and the rest of this is just a bunch of crap. You're strong. You're self-sufficient. You're gonna make it. Me. Well, your friend replied meekly, although something told her the scrolls have two children to raise. There's already one. But why make a friend nervous when she's in an interesting position? Just ask the stack to have an educational talk with her friend. Meanwhile, Christina thought about how to inform about her pregnancy to the main culprit. To call or to do it at home. When she was a very young girl, she had imagined many times how she would inform her beloved husband that they were having a baby. Christina dreamed that it would be beautiful and romantic, like in the movies. And then it dawned on her Christina will buy a beautiful pinar, cook James a romantic dinner, and set the table in the bedroom. And underneath it all she'll tell her husband that now there will be three of them and everything will be fine. By the way, there were some preconditions. At the last place of work James stayed for four months. And it was a record. The young woman was so excited about the idea that she wanted to go home early. Christina no longer thought about the fact that they did not live alone. And how many people would feel about it. Dear Vanessa, it was 20 minutes before the end of the day. Actually, she could have closed her office. And she could have gone home without anyone saying a word. But Christina Finch was a sensitive lady. She called the director and only after getting the go-ahead went to the office to get her purse. When Christina was leaving the publishing house, she suddenly saw the same fortune teller Ramella crossing the road and walking straight towards her. Or was it another gypsy woman? Who could tell? They all looked alike. When they crossed each other, Ramalla suddenly looked at Christina with a hard stare. The gypsy's gaze was screaming at her to run away before it was too late. She didn't even realize that the fortune teller had said those words aloud. Christina felt uncomfortable. But after a moment she forgot about the gypsy. There were more important things in her life now. Christina plowed into the apartment, and with a smile, looking at herself in the mirror hanging in the hallway with pleasure, 
noted that the pregnancy has not yet affected her appearance. The girls at work were frightened by drugstore and pigment stains, but nothing like that. Christina has not matured. Quite the opposite. She had never liked herself so much. A blush played on her cheeks. Her eyes sparkled. Why are you so cheerful? muttered the father-in-law with suspicion, looking at his daughter-in-law. So evasively answered Christina and smiled enigmatically. All more she will not give in to any provocation. Now she had to take care of herself for the sake of the baby. Meanwhile, Vanessa was watching TV and thought she had a lover. There you go. Christina washed her hands and went to her and James' bedroom. What time will you be there? Playfully, she asked her husband. I'm all James answered, and I could hear the surprise in his voice. There was no such thing as play and flirting in their relationship, but maybe we should try to make it happen. And it was up to Christina, by the way. She is a woman after all. And what were those thoughts in her head? Ironic, thought the mother-to-be. No other way than pregnancy has affected me. Hormones in the head hit everyone. Questioned Christina. That's good. That's good. James was clearly puzzled, and it made her laugh. Christina, what's wrong? Indecisive, asked the husband. But in general, yes, she replied with a smile. And what is it? Let's not talk on the phone. All right. What was that? James thought, disconnecting some strange voice here, asking what time I'll be there. And that was really something new, had Christina found out. Frightened, he thought. Well, maybe it's for the best, especially in my situation. When James first saw Christina, she seemed so defenseless to him. Did James like her? More like no than yes. The girl was hardly beautiful, and she was silent all the time. How do you know what she was like? Maybe she's mute. But here Christina, with a friend strikingly similar to Julia Roberts, came out of the ladies' room, as they like to call the most common toilet. It was like the girl had been replaced. Kelly must have indoctrinated the girlfriend. But he, James, decided to take a closer look at her, and he did. No, she wasn't beautiful, but she had a nice figure. And by the way, she's got taste. About such usually say interesting, spectacular with a twist. But of course, Krupnova is not the right word, but well-matched hairstyle and neat makeup negated this flaw. You can say that the nose was the very highlight. What is enough to remember Barbara Streisand or Kathy? Christina, a girl economic, in addition, serious, without wind in her head. So he should marry her, but his mom is a push button, and she didn't like her future daughter-in-law right away. It's like I'm caught between two fires. He complained to his friend Stephen. I don't understand what's wrong. Surprised, asked the latter. Go away from your ancestors, and you will be happy. Christina said the same thing, sighed James. So what's the problem? Well, how can I put it? He hesitated. I just think it might offend mom. Well, gosh darn it. Stephen laughed. You're inimitable. Unmarried people don't get married and want to move out of their parents' house. And this two-legged man is afraid to offend mom. Igor, no offense. I respect Vanessa, but I get the feeling she's manipulating you. She doesn't like Christina, James said with a sigh. But it's more like she's jealous. You're her only son, and here's Christina. Yeah, not fun, he chuckled. Hillbilly chick hooks up with a city boy to settle down in the city. That's what your mom says. Stephen guessed it. Who else would it be? But you know, grinned the friend. Even if Christina was a native of the city from a family of academics or businessmen, it would hardly change anything. Aunt Vanessa would find other arguments against your wife nice, and she doesn't mean that about Christina. She's a self-sufficient girl, so go with the one without a choice. That's easy for James to say. He wasn't used to crossing his mother. Even when Vanessa hurt Christina, he couldn't say anything to her. James berated and shamed himself for it, but he couldn't help it. But he wasn't known for his determination, especially when it came to his mother. And shortly before their wedding anniversary, James met Adriana. This gorgeous, bright, and extraordinary girl turned his life upside down. 
Adriana was a manager at a private car service center where James had once again taken a job. And it seemed to be love at first sight. That's why he'd been here for four months and would probably leave in one single case if the car repair shop went under. Adriana was a vibrant brunette of skin, golden honey colored, piercing with black eyes and a stunning figure. One shot of those beautiful eyes and James was blown away. After a week he realized, if this girl wasn't mine, I would get sick and die. So James decided to win her over at all costs from the first advance. He gave Adriana a gorgeous bouquet of roses and unexpectedly invited her to a movie. James told his wife that he was delayed at work due to an urgent order. Young people took places for kissing and without wasting time, immediately took advantage of it. He remembered going to the movies with his entourage. It was heaven and earth. My God, what I've deprived myself of for six whole years. Desperate, James thought. Christina could have been happy. After all, we didn't and don't have any love. From that day on, work was the only place James felt comfortable. It wasn't just work, though. One day, he and Adriana had gone to get some spare parts and ended up at her house. Their passion was at its peak, and it was foolish to deny it. After a frenetic dance of love, they ate store-bought salads and drank juice out of a cardboard box. James imagined how his mother's eyes would have rounded at the sight of such a Snyder and laughed merrily. Plebeian and food would have been carelessly tossed to Vanessa. By the way, that was the one thing she was in solidarity with the social at Christina on. Thinking of his wife, James gloomed. She doesn't deserve to be deceived by me, he thought. And neither does Adriana. But how do I tell her that I'm married? Adriana asked, noticing the look on his face. Adriana, James began. He took in a chest full of air. And then he stopped talking. I'm listening to you, she smiled. Adriana, I probably should have told you that right away. I really liked you as soon as I saw you. And now I realize it's more than just liking you. I love you, Adriana. And I love you, Adriana replied, looking into his eyes. Hot dates with eating soldiers, which now seemed like James. The most delicious food on Christina continued. It had been almost four months, and he still hadn't dared to tell Adriana that he was married. One day, James arrived at work, and when he confronted Adriana, she said she didn't want to see him anymore. What's wrong? He asked. Although he guessed that James realized that sooner or later Adriana would find out about his marital status. And you're still asking, she confirmed James's assumptions. Adriana's voice was ringing with indignation. How could you? Yesterday my friends and I were sitting in a cafe, and when I showed them your picture, one of the girls recognized you. She works at a book publisher. To be continued, James chose to remain silent. Everything secret sooner or later comes to light. Adriana wrung her hands. Besides, in the age of social media, you can't hide anything. I wanted to tell you, he said humiliatedly. I really did, but you didn't. Anyway, James, it's over between us. I didn't find myself in a dumpster to share you with someone else. The girl nailed him and asked him to leave the office. James was desperate. He wanted to be with Adriana, but he didn't know how to tell Christina. For a whole week, James wasn't himself. Did something happen to you? His mother asked at dinner. No, he answered, glancing at her and then at his wife. Then he added, for good measure, that it was just a hard day at work. Where's Christina? James asked. Was she in your room? Her mother replied with a tight lip and turned away defiantly. Another fight? No, Vanessa shrugged. The son looked at her incredulously, but said nothing. When he entered the bedroom, he was almost speechless. Christina was sitting in a chair, dressed in a pretty lilac stump and smiled. Hi. Check. Hi. James said in a confused voice. You are so beautiful today. Her husband's confusion amused Christina. Really? She asked flirtatiously. Yes, we have some kind of holiday. Christina got up from the chair and approaching her husband, put her hands on his shoulders. James, I have something to tell you. 
But first, she didn't have time to say anything. Vanessa burst unceremoniously into the room. James, are you having dinner? She asked curiously, looking at her son and daughter-in-law. Wait, mom, James waved her off later. The mother abruptly slammed the bedroom door and defiantly bluntly retreated to the hall and hung onto the boy like a street girl. Quietly, she muttered. Christina fell asleep. Her husband couldn't resist smiling at James either. Really, are you hungry? Tilting her head to the side, the young woman asked. Well, I am. He nodded. It's been fun, Christina said, pointing to a beautiful coffee table server, which James hadn't even noticed from excitement. And what are you going to feed her? Your favorite vegetables, the wife smiled. Oh, James stretched out happily and rubbed his hands together in anticipation of a delicious dinner. And what are you dissatisfied with again? Ethan glanced at his wife with a sidelong glance. That nasty person from the collective farm is hanging on to our son. Ugh. The husband grunted in surprise. Vanessa, do you have a fever by any chance? He asked. He touched his wife's forehead to make sure. Vanessa took offense. You should have seen what kind of robe she was wearing. How? God forgive me. What was that about? Vanessa. Ethan said in a belittling tone. But why do you always look for a catch where there isn't one? It's like you were never young. Come on, come on, Defender. I asked him to dinner. Why would he want his mother's bullshit when there's a country courtson in a robe waiting in the bedroom? The husband only sighed heavily. Delicious, James said approvingly. And that would be all right. But what was the fly that had bitten Christina? And then it hit him. What if she knew about Adriana and me? And now she was trying to keep me away. It was flattering. But something made it hard to believe. Christina's a girl with a pivot. James pondered. And if she really knew something, she wouldn't have held the city back. But then what's the point? What's the point though? You kind of wanted to say something, he reminded her. I wanted to say something cryptic. Christina smiled. Anyway, James, I'm not going around. Yeah, about me being pregnant. What? Her husband interjected and coughed, almost giving chunks from the beer. James couldn't help but realize that theoretically, it wasn't that unrealistic. Even when his and Adriana's affair was in full swing, he had faithfully fulfilled his marital duty. And tender loves and burning passions. Of course, it was out of the question. But there was guilt. And notoriously so, because that's the way it's supposed to be. So that's what it's supposed to be. James' reaction puzzled Christina. He was clearly shocked. Only Christina didn't understand whether her husband was happy or not. She patted James on the back and handed him a glass of mineral water. Thank you, gratefully, said the husband, and added, so I'm going to be a father. Yes, Christina confirmed with a smile. The news of the impending addition to the family didn't seem to upset James, who was thinking, well, that's it. Adriana still doesn't want to see me, and I'm a married man who's going to be a father soon. Christina, well, that's great. He was doing his best to act excited, but Christina couldn't believe it. James, I'm glad. God, would they finally be like other loving couples? Christina remembered today's encounter with the gypsy and immediately pushed that memory away with annoyance. To hell with it. Euphoric, she thought. James, glad. And the rest is just nonsense. Adriana stared blankly at the two red stripes and berated herself. But how could I have been so frivolous? and all the crazy passion that had caught up with her for the first time in two years. That was exactly how long it had been since she had broken up with Sasha. Before meeting James, Adriana hadn't graced any guy with her favor. For one thing, she wanted to take a break. And secondly, Adriana wasn't interested in anyone. James reminded her of a defenseless child. It was only later that Adriana realized that was what attracted her to him. And when Adriana found out that her feelings were mutual, she decided James was the man with whom I could be happy and to whom I was ready to give a lot of happiness. The affair was dizzying. Adriana felt like she and James were in the clouds. But how painful was it to fall? 
What to do, do you think? Jean asked. The same friend who worked at the same publishing house as Christina. Give birth. What else? Adriana had terminated her pregnancy a few years ago, when she was a student, a sophomore at Nice. She was sure she would never become a mother again and berated herself for being a coward. This time, Adriana decided not to tempt fate. She will give birth to this child and let James live as he knows how. Adriana will not break up the family, much less humiliate herself. I don't want anything from him. You can count on me, Jean said, taking Adriana's hand in hers. I know, she smiled. And thank you very much. You're welcome. When Christina and James informed his parents that they were going to be grandparents, Ethan rejoiced. Well done, he nodded with a smile. God willing, it won't be the last. And Vanessa shook her lips in displeasure and said, Has Her Majesty really done it? What about his career? The career can wait, Christina said nonchalantly. She did not expect any other reaction from her mother-in-law, so she was not offended at all. Come on, you cut the argument short. James and all three of them looked at him in amazement. James decided to show some character. Future fatherhood was clearly good for him. Family life went on as usual. They lived in expectation of an heir, and Christina never ceased to be amazed at the changes in James's behavior. He became more attentive, and it seemed incredibly touching. Ethan, who had behaved quite good-naturedly before. After learning about the pregnancy, his sisters-in-law went to the supermarket and seemed to buy up all the fruit. Vanessa stopped nagging and nagging about nothing. Well, thank goodness for that. One evening, Christina got a call from her mother, Christina. Would you like to live in the country for a while? Miranda suggested it. Mom's on maternity leave anyway. Yes, I would love to, exclaimed the young woman. What's the need? Dad and I are going to a resort in Thailand. With pride answered the mother and sighed. I would ask Davidka, does she understand? Christina understood. Her brother David had moved to the neighboring village to his girlfriend and was not an arrogant, arrogant and terribly jealous person. Sophia had immediately insisted on moving in with her. There was a good and well-maintained house left by her grandmother. It was jealousy and feasty girls to the point of absurdity. Once, when their married life with David was just beginning, and I thought that a young sales girl was making eyes at him. She's probably not the only one, Sophia said. As the young men left the store, here's the thing, my dear. You will only come here with me. If for some reason I can't make it, you won't go anywhere either. David worked at a service station 24 7 and there was really nothing stopping him from staying with his parents, except for the jealous girlfriend. Since Sophia worked at the local school, she couldn't keep her roommate company. As it happened, her parents had to ask Christina about it. But go, James said after a little thought. I can't work. Yes, I understand, nodded Christina. To tell the truth, the young woman was a little disappointed. She had thought James would say how much he would miss her. Apparently, he just hadn't realized it. Christina reassured herself. James just needed time. Well, why don't you go? He smiled. It's nice in the countryside in winter. The air is so fresh. Will it do you and the baby good? Yes, she smiled back. James, is something wrong? His father asked, looking at him intently. The son, hiding his eyes, sighed heavily. Today he had learned that Adriana was expecting a baby. At first James thought that the girl he had never forgotten was just getting better. But when rumors spread around the car service that Adriana was going on maternity leave, James physically felt an electric shock run through him. It's his baby. Son, don't be silent, Ethan said. Nothing's wrong. James mumbled uncertainly. I've known you for 28 years, and I can sense the slightest change in your mood. So spit it out, James. And to make it easier for you, let's have a little one. Come on. The son waved his hand. Suddenly, he wanted not just a little drop, but to get drunk. Of course, he realized that the problem wasn't going anywhere, but temporary relief was a good thing. Sometimes, 
Ethan brought a bottle of his own currants and tincture from the bar. He sliced cheese, ham, and tomatoes, and said to himself and his son in a sedate manner. But it felt good and warm all over his body, and James felt a little better. But said the father, tell me what happened. I don't know where to start, but start somewhere, Ethan grinned. I fell in love with someone else. You did, he exclaimed in amazement. A long time ago, about six months ago. True, we broke up. But if you broke up, what are you talking about? Father didn't understand. Then maybe it's not love at all. It can happen. You're an adult. So I'll tell you man to man, I'm not a saint either. Love, James sighed, ignoring the racy innuendo. You broke up over what? Adriana found out I was married. And recently I found out she was pregnant. Yeah, the man said thoughtfully. After a moment's silence, he asked, Are you sure it's yours? I'm sure, nodded the son. Adriana is going on maternity leave, so the timing fits. Yes, the situation stretched Ethan. For the first time, in a while Vanessa was happy to be home. On a gossipy, soul-searching trip with an old pal, she rode the shuttle bus and anticipated. And here was the third night without Christina. Sure, the hated daughter-in-law had only been away in her village for a couple of weeks, but at least she wouldn't have to see that face for a while. James, and where did he find her? Once again, Vanessa thought. She went up to the apartment when she heard the excited voices of her husband and son from the kitchen. Vanessa realized that they were discussing some hot topic over a hot drink. The woman wanted to enter the kitchen and let her know she was coming. But when she heard her daughter-in-law's name, she decided to refrain for the time being. And it seems for good reason. What can I advise you? Vanessa heard her husband's thoughtful voice, only to help the child financially your Adriana doesn't want to see you, while with Christina you are doing well. Adriana, she marveled. James has another woman. Well, that's great. It's a great excuse to kick that redneck out of here pregnant. That's a big deal. Alimony still on the books. Let her go back to her collective farm. It didn't even occur to Vanessa that she might not like her supposed new daughter-in-law either. Her dislike for Christina was truly boundless. Right, Ethan, said James, can help the child financially. Vanessa thought approvingly, not even realizing that she was to become a grandmother of two grandchildren. Hello, Eagles, she said cheerfully swinging open the kitchen door. And here is our mother, smiled for Camilla Vithan, and nodding at half a bottle, offered his wife to take from Moros. Well, if only from Moros, what's the occasion of the banquet? It's not a banquet. And defiantly, said the husband, raising up his index finger, it's a man-to-man -man talk. Well, if you're having a man's talk, I won't interrupt you. Vanessa, come on. I was just kidding. It's okay, she smiled. Vanessa wanted to dance, to think that her son had finally had an epiphany. She walked out of the kitchen, pulled her cell phone out of her bag, and quickly dialed Anna's number, the same friend she'd just gotten back from. Vanessa was terribly curious about who Adriana was, but she didn't ask her son. Not James, not Ethan. Didn't even realize she'd heard their conversation. Christina was two days away from arriving. I wish she hadn't come at all, especially since, as it turned out, Christina had nothing to do here. Well, that could easily be arranged, Vanessa realized. Just pick the right moment and get her out of here. No problem. She heard her son's voice as she passed his bedroom. I'll meet you there. Just call me when you get into town. I guess James is talking to his wife. Vanessa smiled slyly. Her plan was as simple as genius. It wasn't really a plan, just a little diversion for the good of the family. Have you talked to Christina? Vanessa asked her son when he came out of the bedroom, dressed in a bathrobe. Aha. Uh -huh. And when is she coming? Innocently inquired the mother. She'll be in town tomorrow at four, but you're at work at that time. So, Christina will call me and I'll meet her. Mom, I'm going to the bathroom. If anyone calls, you answer it. Tell them I'll call them back later. 
Got it, she nodded. And after waiting until James, from the sound of it, had dipped into the bathroom, she went into their bedroom. Vanessa, furtively, looked around and finally found what she was looking for a cell phone. Her son had found Christina's number, and she quickly blocked it. Now let her call as much as she likes, thought the treacherous mother-in-law with gloating satisfaction. Not understanding anything, perplexed Christina. We had agreed. She had already dialed her husband's phone number 15 times. But James didn't answer. Even if he was very busy at work, he could have texted. Christina pondered. The clock was already showing 4.40. Still no response from James. She bent under the weight of two bags with lines, jam and gifts from Thailand, showing cab stands. Girl, why are you pushing such heavy things? I heard a nice male voice in your position. Where does your husband look? Or is there no husband? She wanted to say it's none of his business. A handsome guy, about 27 years old, picked up the bags and asked you to the bus stop. I'd like a cab, answered Christina with a nod pointing to the parking lot, where a cavalcade of cars with checkers lined up. Reasonably agreed the unexpected assistant. And you know, God himself sent me to you. That's true, laughed Christina, although she was not amused at all. What's the matter? Why isn't James answering? Maybe something's wrong. You don't get it, do you? The guy grinned. I'm just a cab driver. Then God really did send you to me, she agreed. The cab driver asked from the doctor, deftly dumping the bags into the trunk. Why did you think so? Christina asked in surprise. What's so strange about it? She came with groceries, among which you can guess jars of pickles and tomatoes. Usually with all these things come from the village. Christina doesn't look like a student with her almost eight-month belly. The guy's so embarrassed. Just wondering where we're going. Minen Street. I see. The cab driver answered in a cheerful voice and started the engine. On the way they got to talking. The guy's name was Mason. And what's your name? Beauty? He asked with a smile. Christina shyly, she answered. Talking to a strange man made her a little embarrassed. Nice to meet you, Christina. I hope they will meet you at the entrance. I don't know, sighed the young woman. Her husband promised to come and didn't. Mason guessed. No. He called and didn't answer. I'm afraid something might happen, but let's hope for the best. I wish, sighed Christina. When they pulled up, the young woman dialed James' number again. There was no answer. The cab driver asked sympathetically. She shook her head. Let me help you carry the bags. The services of a rapist are free of charge. Mason couldn't help but smile. But Christina, let's say goodbye said Mason at the door. The guy's voice sounded sad. It made her feel uncomfortable. Christina started to open the door, but it suddenly swung open. Surprised, Vanessa said angrily, actually the mother-in-law should be at work. Christina suddenly had a bad feeling. Did something really happen? Vanessa, honey, is something wrong? She exclaimed. How cute I am, she hissed. But you got that right. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with James. Christina asked fearfully, deciding to ignore the tone. Vanessa, it wouldn't hurt to find out what happened first. It's just that I called him many times and he doesn't answer. Her mother-in-law interrupted her impolitely and laughed deafeningly. Don't wait up. What's the matter? Christina couldn't stand it. She had already realized that nothing terrible had happened to her husband. James had finally come to his senses. Vanessa proclaimed triumphantly, he's in love with another woman. No match for you and ideas and ideas without looking back. There's nothing more for you to do here. James has blacklisted you. Don't you realize you're no match for my son? Go and get your stinking Solomon. I don't want to talk to you anymore. But James and I just talked yesterday and he promised to meet me. Christina said incredulously, Look, you're a country cow, and the fact that you were blocked without explanation is not an argument. The mother-in-law got angry. Christina couldn't believe what her mother-in-law was saying. Yeah, 
But James' cell phone really wasn't answering. In that amount of time, he could have seen her calls, or at least missed calls, more than once. Besides, knowing James's indecisive nature, it could be assumed that the hubby had chickened out. Christina didn't want to believe it, but everything pointed that way. Still, I'd like to talk to James, she said firmly. Even if it is as you say, I want to look him in the eye. You want to do what you want. Vanessa shouted in her sister-in-law's face. Stepping on her, she pushed Christina in the shoulder. She lost her balance, swung her arms awkwardly, and tumbled down the stairs. Oh God, the woman said in horror, but I didn't mean to do it. She did, she did. What's going on here? The upstairs neighbor asked. The man was coming downstairs and seeing Christina lying between the floors, turned pale, and she herself, as if in delirium, repeated Vanessa. She really didn't want to. What's the matter with the girl? The man bellowed. She's herself. Vanessa, the neighbor above, whose name was Jacob, approached Christina and making sure she was alive, yelled at the woman. What are you standing there for? Call an ambulance. She's on her own. The neighbor had his doubts about that. He had heard Vanessa scold his sister-in-law more than once and had probably pushed her down the stairs. Perhaps it was unintentional. But either way, the young woman needed medical attention. Taking a closer look at the neighbor, Jacob realized she was in shock and took matters into his own hands. The man took his cell phone out of his pocket and promptly called an ambulance. Be patient, sweetheart, the man coaxed. He really liked this interesting young woman. What can't be said for the slimy neighbor? Had Ethan been lucky enough to marry that girder? Jacob thought, but there was nothing to be done. Vanessa was still in a state of shock and therefore she too needed medical attention. The ambulance arrived about 10 minutes later. The doctors loaded Christina into the car and the remaining doctor asked a concerned neighbor with whom Vanessa lives, her husband, her son, and the young woman who was taken away. You can contact them. There's no point in taking the woman to hospital, but you shouldn't leave one behind. The door to the apartment was open and Jacob helped the doctor usher Vanessa into the apartment. She herself, she herself repeated the woman as if wound up. So can you contact the husband or the son? The doctor repeated his question. Yes, of course, nodded the neighbor. I have Ethan's number where I was singing Christina in a weak voice, slowly spilled into my eyes. In the hospital, she heard a voice, and when she opened her eyes, she saw a man in a white coat. How am I here? Did your neighbor call for an ambulance? Christina remembered what had happened, and her face turned as pale as chalk. What's wrong with my baby? She asked. Christina Vladimirovna, you now need to rest, sleep, and then we will talk to you. What's wrong with my child, persistently said the young woman. I'm very sorry, the doctor replied. The baby could not be saved. Christina turned her back to the wall and sobbed bitterly. The next day, James came to see her. Christina, I am very sorry, he said gently. Sorry, Christina grinned mockingly. What about the woman of your dreams? What woman? You know, the one who's not like me. Like your mom said before. Her lips quivered. What the hell is this? James exclaimed. Her mom doesn't know her. When he realized he'd made a mistake, he fell silent and then spoke awkwardly. I mean, I was going to say, don't James with a sad smile and shook his head, Christina. If you really loved another woman, then run to her and make her happy. And of course, be happy yourself. Christina, you are extraordinary, quietly said the husband. Thank you and you be happy too. I will try. Christina nodded, and tears appeared in her eyes. But run along, and when I'm better, we'll get a divorce. When James went to see his now almost ex-wife, he was in the mood for a difficult conversation, but it went well. Christina's great. He thought on his way to the bus stop. He had to get to work. But first, James would go to a few places. The prices at the jewelry store were touching but James didn't mind. He'd gotten his paycheck the other day and had barely spent it. 
James' attention was drawn to a gold ring with a rich framing of tiny diamonds, just right for the color of Lenny's eyes. He thought enthusiastically and without hesitation bought the ring. You have excellent taste in simple metal young, spectacular blonde. Come again. Do you want it for a gift? Or do you have some other occasion? The pretty flower girl asked with a smile. Today I'm proposing to the best girl on Christina, James announced solemnly. What are roses then? The girl nodded understandingly. Pay attention to these dark red ones. The saints were indeed a miracle how good the petals of piercing dark scarlet color seemed velvet. Fragrance. I wonder what Garden of Eden they grow in, James thought. The main thing is not to lose the romantic mood. When James arrived at work, the first thing he did was to run to Adriana's office. The colleagues looked at each other meaningfully. And you are the one who indifferently threw Adriana. She was packing and she clearly did not care about James. It's nothing that can be easily remedied. At least, that's what he hoped. Yes, that's me, said James decisively, handing her the roses and getting down on one knee. Adriana, I love you and I want to be with you. She wanted to say something, and it was something that James obviously didn't like. So he immediately took matters into his own hands. Adriana, sweetheart, my darling, I know what you're going to say. Yes, I'm married, but now it's just a matter of weeks. Christina and I are getting a divorce, and as you can see, there's nothing stopping us from being together. Adriana, marry me. In one breath, James blurted out and took out a velvet box from his pocket and handed it to his beloved. From the side of the entrance, a great applause was heard. Verka, say yes. Someone shouted, yes quietly said the happy bride and laughingly added getting up from her knees hero lover james obey he approached adriana and gently stroked her belly he whispered do you know who we are going to have she whispered back we're having a girl a month later the lovers signed and another month later they had a baby girl whom they named christina i hope you won't be jealous james asked if you don't mind I don't mind. His wife shook her head with a smile. Personally, I think of your ex as a kind of Cupid. The newly minted young father laughed. I wonder how Christina would feel about such a comparison. Cupid. After the divorce, Christina plunged headlong into work. Thank God, she and James parted peacefully, you could say friends. After maternity leave and divorce, the first thing Christina did was freshen up her hair and update her closet. You're gorgeous, Kelly said enthusiastically. Divorce has obviously been good for you. Trust me, you won't be alone for long. You know, Kelly, I've decided to take it slow. Like you said, we have to choose. The friends laughed merrily. Christina to you another talent announced Secretary Verushka. Let her come in. She nodded wistfully. Imagining a conversation with the next graphomaniac, which are scattered like mushrooms after the rain. When the visitor came and Christina was dead, standing in front of her was Mason the cab driver, the same cabbie who'd driven her away that day when, well, don't mention the sad part. Christina, Mason, they said each other's names in sync and laughed merrily. Let's see what you got. Christina switched to a business-like tone. I'm writing poetry. Don't laugh. Why would I laugh? It's my job. Mason's poems, though simple and uncomplicated, ran to the goosebumps. As you got into the cab, did you smile, or was it just me? When Christina read these lines, she felt herself blushing. It didn't take much intelligence to realize who these poems were about. Not bad. Not bad at all. She nodded approvingly and repeated the last line but unfortunately not fluently. Christina, I, Mason, you have the wrong information. Unexpectedly, she said, what are you talking about? He didn't get it. Christina mumbled embarrassedly, thinking, what am I doing? It's just that my husband and I divorced two months ago. I'm sorry, said Mason. Though in fact roses, tulips, and other fauna slowly but surely began to bloom in his soul, there is nothing to be sorry about. Christina waved his hand. 
Our marriage was doomed from the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. Why? Surprise, cab driver. The poet was just being frank. Well, sometimes people need to talk, he said. Christina, yes. Would it be impertinent of me to invite you to a cafe? Why not? Christina smiled. Mason was easy and fun. The young people switched to the first name. After that, it seemed to both of them that they knew each other for 1,000 years. How long have you been writing poetry? Asked Christina. Since high school, answered Mason. Be honest. My poems have a chance of being recognized. How can I put it? To be honest, poems as such are not in trend right now. But they're good for Toastmasters greeting cards and stuff like that. Well, thank you for your candor. After the cafe, Mason took Christina to the apartment she rented after the divorce. You can come in, she offered. I have very tasty tea, but raspberry and currant flowers with lemon are cosmos. After the tea ceremony, Mason left, and Christina grabbed her phone. Kelly, I think I'm in love, she declared. I think, no, you don't. I'm in love, and I think I'm in love for good. But love that is, I hope, a mutual declaration of love has not sounded. Christina replied in a low voice. Oh, Kelly, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? By the way, what's his name? Mason. Well, either you and Mason are going to have something or you're not. There's no three ways about it. That's not optimistic. More like realistic. And it's pretty much up to you. Remember that night at the coffee shop with the wall and James? So what? And the fact that then you did it all. And if you want, it will work out in this time, said her friend. The past year had been eventful. No sooner had the wedding of Stephen and Kelly rumbled off. David told his sister he was getting married. Don't tell me you're marrying Sophia. Christina was horrified. I won't, laughed her brother, because I'm marrying Sophia. My fiance's name is Evelyn, and I'll bet you'll like her. Evelyn really did like her a lot. But most importantly, Christina caught the bride's bouquet. Looks like I can't get out of this one. Mason jokingly waved his hands and promised to come back to this conversation, which he did a week later. It's like a wedding boom, Kelly said with a smile. Although we have Stephen, and the other news is science, 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 we're having a baby. Congratulations, Christina exclaimed. This is really great news. And a month after the wedding, Christina proudly informed Mason that they too would become parents. The baby was sleeping serenely and advised touchingly. Christina opened Messenger and ran through the congratulations with a smile. She received congratulations from her brother and son, Hehe's parents from aunt colleagues, classmates, and even from her ex-husband and his Adriana. And Rick opened his blue milky eyes and poked the phone at that time. Sweetheart, come to the window, read the message. Well, shall we go meet daddy? Gently whispered Christina and went to the window. The happy young father stood in the courtyard of the maternity hospital with a bouquet of roses and a bunch of balloons. On the biggest balloon it was written thank you for your son and the happy young mother held her baby in her arms and looked at her husband with a smile. Tears of happiness were flowing down her cheeks.